Hi, I've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Thursday, October 1st, 2015. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, Hurricane Joaquin continues to move very slowly on a drift toward the west-southwest today, and uh, strengthening as it does so, now a Category 4 hurricane with 130 mile per hour sustained winds as we see a more symmetric CDO now, and the eye has not cleared out yet. Uh, but uh, the outflow continues to expand to the north as wind shear decreases and uh, this is now a much uh, healthier looking and is a major hurricane and unfortunately becoming quite a disaster for the central Bahamas here as the eye wall has been raking Crooked Island and is now nearing uh, Long Island here in the central Bahamas and hours of hurricane conditions and uh, heavy rain for a uh, long duration is likely to yield high damages for some of the islands in here and so hopefully it's not as bad as feared uh, but our thoughts go out to this area as Joaquin moves very slowly through and it continues to strengthen this is the recon data from earlier showing the west southwest drift with the slowly falling pressure uh, and the upgrade to a category four after they found winds of 130 miles per hour in the storm. All of these purple wind barbs indicate winds above hurricane force at flight level and a good majority of that makes it down toward the surface and this will very slowly now start to turn toward the northwest as time goes on as this upper trough here evident on water vapor imagery begins to dig into the southeastern u.s erode this uh, little ridge to the north of the hurricane and allow it to finally turn more toward the north in this southerly flow here and uh, now the big forecast issue with the storm has been whether it will be able to interact with this trough sufficiently to get slingshotted toward the west and into the U.S. eastern seaboard. And we talked yesterday about how uh, the slower movement of the storm depicted by the European model correctly and the slow movement in the Bahamas could allow it to miss the connection with this trough and as this cuts off into a cutoff upper low here and become more symmetric that the hurricane may not be far enough north to get captured and instead may escape toward the northeast toward the weakness provided by this trough this upper this deep layer trough uh, toward the east of the storm and escape away from the United States and the European has held on to that solution uh, but unlike yesterday when the majority of the other models uh, showed a US landfall they have now flipped to the euro and now show a track away from the United States because of how slow Joaquin has moved over the last few days and uh, this is the European Ensemble mean continuing to show to show that with the uh, cutoff upper low and the storm now moving toward the northeast in the vicinity of Bermuda again missing the connection uh, because it is too late and now the GFS ensemble has shifted to the same with uh, the majority of members now avoiding the United States entirely whereas yesterday the majority were into North Carolina so a big model shift overnight last night. Uh, but we have seen several shifts with this storm, and remember this pattern is very delicate. We're talking about the fine details of a cutoff upper low, a very strong hurricane, and another upper low to the east, and the interaction between these three features is not going to be perfectly depicted by the computer models, and at this point, the best intuition is that with Joaquin moving this slowly, uh, that a track offshore seems more likely and so the NHC has shifted the track offshore now along with the rest of the models now going toward the European solution and this is now probably the most likely scenario however impacts to the United States cannot be ruled out especially since we still have several days to watch Joaquin and so this is not the time to write it off and uh, this pattern is going to be very dangerous either way because uh, as this cutoff upper low uh, digs all this moisture starts coming to the Carolinas and we have flash flood watches over this part of the country and we could see as much as 20 inches of rain on the rainfall forecast from WPC here we see a maximum over South Carolina of 20 inches and several inches over a large area this could be a disaster in its own right for this area of the country even without Hurricane Joaquin having any part of it so even though this is not directly related to the tropics this entire situation is still going to impact a good portion of the United States and Joaquin itself uh, although more likely now it seems today to avoid the United States, it is not worth letting your guard down at this point. We've seen too much change and uh, you cannot forecast a situation like this perfectly three days plus in advance. We just can't do it at this point. 
So continue to keep an eye on the storm. Strengthening is still possible as time goes on, as a new outflow channel develops to the northwest as this trough nears, and it'll have now dual outflow channels, one to the southeast, one to the north. That could allow another avenue for more strengthening. The water remains warm, and uh, we can see it looking more symmetric today. So uh, more recon planes will be flying to sample data from the storm. And uh, either way, though, the Bahamas dealing with a very, very extremely dangerous and catastrophic hurricane for that area. Um, continue to stay with the National Hurricane Center for the latest information on the storm as things develop and with your local National Weather Service office uh, to get information on the flooding that could be occurring in this part of the country over the next couple of days. That begins tonight really as this rain moves ashore so this is already starting to impact. Keep an eye on it. Uh, definitely stay up to date. Alright that's it for today. Thanks for watching.